There we go. Uh, what we're going to do is set up that path coming out of the garage door. If you do not have it yet, just wait until you do the garage and then you can set that up. Cool. All right. So vanishing point. I'm going to give myself a little space in between my garage and my house. I don't want my cement going right up to my house. That could be a nice little area that you put some plants and stuff like that. If you want the cement to go all the way to your house, you can. But that tends to cause problems with water. Right, because if the water pulls off of the cement and it has no place to go other than your foundation, it can cause problems with your foundation. So I like putting a little space right there, just so you can have, uh, you know, a nice little area that goes away. Now I'm gonna cut through my sidewalk. I'm gonna cut through my sidewalk just so we can adjust that as we go a little bit later. So I put a little line right here on the right hand side. I'm gonna do the same thing to the left. And again, I'm putting a little space. Technically, we have uh, studs and thicknesses to walls that we should do. We're not being totally accurate, see, accurate to carpentry. But, you know, I'm just going to go and put that little pathway. Now, once I put that little pathway, I am going to erase my bit of sidewalk that it goes through. Now, depending on where you live, sometimes the sidewalk is left and you actually have to drive over the sidewalk to get out of your driveway. Sometimes though, depending on when the sidewalk was built, you're going to have your cement and the sidewalk just stops on either side of it. Now our sidewalk has a thickness though, right? And our cement should have a thickness as well too. But the only place you're going to see that thickness is here on the left. The only place you're going to see it is here on the left. Now, what do you think we should do here and here to make our cement and our sidewalk kind of work together? Is our sidewalk thicker than our cement or is it about the same? It should be the same. It should be about the same. Sometimes they're a little thicker, right? And if it is thicker, then you would definitely want to make yourself a little ramp to your cement so that you are not, like if you're riding a bike across here that's not hitting your tire and you're killing yourself on your sidewalk. Uh, you would, shouldn't have anything that's a, a giant gap or a giant ledge going from any one surface to the other. What we can do though, what we can do is just make sure that our cement, our driveway, goes all the way down off the page and we can make sure that we kind of see where the sidewalk ends and it would overlap slightly. No, actually there would be a gap right there because we would see, you know, we wouldn't see anything at all right now. If they're the same level, you wouldn't see anything. It just looks like it would tuck behind, but it doesn't. It's kind of fun. And we'd see that little thickness here to match it up. So it just kind of hit up against it and you would see the thickness in the front, and you wouldn't see the thickness on this side. Now, if you wanted to put yourself some little oil spots on your cement, some more cracks in your cement, I have all kinds of cracks in my cement because there's a giant oak tree right on the side of my driveway. So I actually put uh, aquarium rocks in all the cracks with cement filler so that it kind of looks like it's all blue. It's kind of fun. Um, but if you want to put some cracks, make it look a little more authentic, you can. If you want to put some little plants in this area, you can put some little flowers if you want. If you left enough room for some little plants. Like I said, I have somebody with a garage door right there, so he won't have plants. But if you want to put some little plants, you can. Wee, some little flowers. So, like, I just... We want the driveways required. The extra little things are just extra. Extra little things are just extra. But after our driveway, we want to put a window and a door on that side of the house. So I'm going to zoom back in a little bit so we can see the side of the house a little bit more. So we can do the window and the door. Got it? We okay? Yeah? All right. Now, if you want to start putting stuff in your garage after we put the door, you can. It's not required to fill it up with stuff, though, but it is an option. Now, the first thing I want to put is another window here, right? I want to put a window here. It could be a tiny window. It could be two windows. It could be a single window. 
doesn't matter, but I just want to put a window here. I like a, a lot of natural light inside the house. It definitely saves on electric bills because you don't have to turn in all the lights constantly. Now, if I'm going to put a window here, can I do like I did my windows in the front and just put some horizontals and verticals? Does that look right? No, it does not. That does not look right at all. This does not go to our vanishing point. Excellent. So which lines are we going to need to go to the vanishing point? Very good. Our horizontals need to go to the vanishing point. So my verticals are still going to stay nice and vertical. You don't want to go too overboard with it. Now, if you really want to be fancy, you can do like a picture window, the big, big wide one. You can even do, um, what do you call those windows that stick out from your house? Dormer windows? No, that's not it. I don't remember what they call those. They're not, they're not too in right now. Like you'd have a window that kind of sticks out from your house like this. You know? Like it has a, a part that kind of... Like you can sit on yeah, you can like sit in. I, I don't remember what they're called though. Do you remember what they're called? Yeah, I don't remember. They have a name, but they, they, don't, they don't make those quite as much as what they used to. Bay window, that's it. You're right. Good job. Yeah, I mean, if you want to set up a bay window, you can have a little seat in there. It could be a nice place to read or sit with your cat because you know the cats come and sit there too. Now, with my verticals, I'm making a nice big window right here on the side. But my horizontals, my top and my bottom, need to line up with the vanishing point. If you don't use the vanishing point, do you think it would be easy to see that is incorrect? Yes, obviously, because if you don't use your vanishing point, you are definitely going to notice that it looks different than the wall that it's on. That's why we noticed that the just little horizontal one looks so off, right? That's why it looks off. Windows need the same thing around it as doors, so we're going to put a frame around it too. I'm going to put a frame around it too, little vanishing points. And I've gotten really intrigued by Natalie's idea to put like a seat in there. So I'm going to put a depth to this window that you can see going inside. You do not have to do this, but if you want to, it's just three little simple lines. Three little simple lines. I'm going to set up from this bottom left-hand corner a horizontal. That would be like the depth of the cushion or the seat that would be inside. Once I figure out how wide I want it to be, I put a vertical coming up from there and a vanishing point line coming from the bottom corner. And then you can make some little cushions. You can put a little pillow on the side right there. Definitely the cat can sit, right? You can put some little pillows, you can put some little cushions. You can put a book, because you know that's where I would be sitting and reading. You can put all kinds of little things in there. You do not have to put this depth if you do not want. But if you wanted, I just wanted to show you what they look like. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm going to put a little tiny table that you would see inside. And on that table, there's a little plant. Because, you know, you want a little plant to sit on the side of you while you're reading. You could also use that little table to put your hot chocolate or your coffee while you're reading. Fun times. There could even be a little rug peeking out in there. You can put some of your details of your inside of your house. None of that is required. All I want is a window right there and I want to see the frame around and I want to see that it has the top and bottom going to the vanishing point. Any of the extras, if you want to put any of that stuff on the inside, if you wanted to put any of your details inside of the house, all of that is extra. They are not required, right? But any problems with the main structure of the window? Pretty good? All right, one more thing we're going to put before I start going around and checking again. I want to put a door inside that garage because if you're going to have a garage, one, don't put so much junk in it that you can't park in there. That makes no sense. If you want some a place to put junk in, get a shed. That's what the junk is for. You have a shed. But a garage, and this is a tiny garage. They probably just fit in one of those little Easter egg cars in there, but that's okay. This garage is a place for you to park your car. And if it's pouring down raining, you do not want to have to walk out of the garage to come to your front door. 
it makes sense to have a door inside the garage to get into your house, right? It makes sense. It's not where company comes into your house. No, it's where you come into your house after you've parked there. It's also good for safety reasons. If you have a garage door that you can open and close, you open your garage door, you pull in, you close your garage door, then you get into your house much less likely that you're going to have a home invasion kind of situation going on. Yes. Having that close is making things a little bit more secure. So, you know, just some real life connections to the stuff that we draw, but we're going to set up a little door in here. Now for our door, just like the window, we need some sides that are going to be nice and vertical. And we need a top. That's going to go to the vanishing point and we need a frame and a doorknob. So this is all pretty much what we've done before. Now the top of your door may get covered by part of your roof. That is okay. If it gets chopped off by the top of it, it's, it's all right. As long as your door looks tall enough to walk through, you're good to go. I'm going to put my frame If you want to put a little window in that one, you can. You don't have to, though. This is not usually where company's coming in. So you shouldn't have to look to see who's coming in your door right here. That should just be the people who are driving in. Um, you can put yourself your little doorknob sticking out on the side. If you want to put the little window in the door, you can. If you want to put another little doormat, you can. However, if they have muddy feet right there, that means they had muddy feet in your car. And doggone it, they should not have muddy feet in your car. So it costs a lot to detail a car. It does. People make good money doing that. But it costs. So I've got my little door in there. Like I said, if you wanted to put a little rug in front of it or something, you absolutely could. And if you wanted to start playing around with the inside of your garage, putting things in there, you absolutely could. You can set up a workbench in the back. You could start putting some, some paint, some, uh, I don't know, whatever people do in garages but just make sure you leave enough room for your car. If you want to actually put the car in there, go for it. I'm going to put a little workbench in the back then. Do, 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 do. Could have your toolbox in there. Tools are expensive. Close your garage. You can have some cabinets underneath. I am making room. Okay, now I don't have even an Easter egg car. I'm going to have a Vespa because that's about all I'm going to be able to fit in this garage. <laughs> but it's going to be a really nice Vespa. Y'all know what Vespas are? It's kind of like a little motorized scooter. <laughs> right? Some fun little things, but it's not a whole car. I'm going to put some little cabinet doors down here. Divide that up. I'm gonna divide up the middle. Put some little doorknobs. Cause storage is a good thing. Having storage in whatever area you are is a good thing. Mm -mm -mm. Want to put some stuff on top? You can. But I started putting some stuff in my garage. Now we are at 